Hey what's up everyone, welcome to FX Maniac, this is Sayyid Mahmoud Amiri again and uh, welcome to another uh, 3D Studio Max and Typhlow tutorial. So I've done this uh, Typhlow for Absolute Beginners tutorial which I hope you enjoyed it and if you haven't watched it before watching this video I do recommend watching this one first if you are new to Typhlow. And uh, continuing this series, I do want to talk about some operators inside of Typhlow. So I'll be doing a separate tutorial for each operator and its usage. Uh, so yeah. Um, and today we're going to be taking a look at the uh, tie spline operator, like the spline birth. So it's basically going to allow you to give birth to particles along a spline. And at the end, we're going to be creating something like this. And if you want to see the render version, so I've got one here, so I have the circle and I've got some crazy amount of particles being born out of it and it looks really nice and I've composited some like motion blur and glow and color correction in After Effects. And it once you made the effect, it is very customizable, just change the shape and you'll get some beautiful particle effects uh, based on your shape so it can be any sort of curve or shape so uh, without wasting any more time let's get started but before we go into it um, if you're new to my channel uh, you you are very welcome to hit the subscribe button and uh, even if you don't hit it now you can just decide it by yourself by the end of the video uh, and if you uh, are if you guys are in need of some great high quality royalty free music you can just go ahead and subscribe to my audio aura channel so we have some really high end royalty free no copyright music that you can use it for your videos all right let's get started so here i am inside of 3d studio max i am just going to reset everything so don't save it it's going to be a very quick tutorial so uh yeah the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create my tie flow. So then go into the editor and we've talked about the basics and everything in the last tutorial. So if you haven't checked that out, I'll put like a thing on the right top corner of the video so that you can, uh, you can uh, click it and watch it. All right, so here it is, the birth spline operator. And we're going to be talking um, about the other operators as well. So birth spline so it specifically says here that the birth spline operator can be used to birth new particles on the curves of splines so if you go ahead and drag it here you're going to need to have a spline so firstly i'm going to go into the uh, shapes and i'm just going to add a what a donut so yeah just like that let's see what happens so i'm just going to hit a hit e and A for the angle snap, E for rotation, and I'm just going to rotate it 90 degrees, scale it up, move it here, and move it here. And you can see that the edges are kind of a little jagged, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the shape, go to interpolation, make it adaptive, so it's just as smooth as possible. And I'm just going to go back to my tie flow and just make it small, shrink it down so we can see both of our things. All right, so the other thing I'm going to do is pick the uh, spline, and now you have some particles along that spline, as you can see. And if you can't see it, you can just go ahead and change the color to like white, so you can see it properly. And uh, yeah, we have particles along that spline, and then we have some options. So you can go with uh, percent along the spline, so we have this percent, the lower it is, the more particles, and the higher it is, the less number of particles. And you also have like distance, so it's kind of like the distance between the particles. So the lesser it is, of course, the more dense it's going to be. And the start and end is actually the start and end of the particles being born on the timeline. So if you if you hit it like a hundred, so it's going to continue, uh, you know, giving birth to particles across like a hundred frames. So in this case, we need it to be 100 frames because we need to continuously give birth to particles in order for them to be affected by the force later. So we can we can do that later. So yeah, and uh, the other thing to achieve this effect, uh, you need to add like a force operator. So hit tab again to bring up the force or you can just search it here. So here it is, the force and drag it here. And I want to add some uh, 
turbulence. So I'll set the strength to two. So it's crazy high. So now you can see that they're moving, but we don't have any frequency. So I'm just going to set it to one. So now we have our particles kind of moving in that in that sort of a fashion. But I think they're a little too sporadic. So the thing I can do is I can decrease this to one because I don't want it to be that much. And the other thing is, if you see in this example, the particles are dying after a certain age. And that's because we don't want them to live forever. And it will take like forever to calculate and render. So you need to delete them after, a, after some time. So um, we need a condition for that. And conditions are basically like tests inside of Typeflow, these uh, yellow ones, these yellow operators, which is basically saying if this thing is true, then you should go ahead and do something. And if it's not, you should go ahead and do something else. So we are going to be taking a look at some conditions, but um, uh, yeah, for now, we're going to need the uh, time test. So it's basically a test. It says after... If the frame is greater than 10 or uh, and the variation of 3, then we can do something. So we want to delete the particles after 10 frames of them being born. So I'm just going to hit tab on the outside and I'm just going to hit like delete. And here is the delete uh, operator. So just go ahead and link the time test to the new operator, the new event, sorry. And now they're going to be deleted after 10 frames. So if you want them to last longer, you can just increase the frame. So 15 frames. So yeah, they're just now deleting after 15 frames. All right, so now it's looking pretty nice. Um, the thing we can do is uh, play around with the force, probably like 0.6 maybe, just like that. And um, yeah, so that's it. And now if you want to increase the number of particles, you can just go ahead and go into the birth spline and decrease the... Uh, distance between them. You do want to be very careful with this number because if you go too low, it's just going to crash your system because that is going to create a lot of particles and it is going to take a lot of time to basically, uh, you know, sort of calculate, right? All right, so we have this result and if you see in this example, we have the particles sort of moving backwards. So uh, there is something that we can do about it. So in the force operator, we have this uh, uh, direction. So the direction is Y going that way. So I'm just going to go into built-in wind and set it to Y1 and strength to probably 0.2. So now the particles are going to be going that way, just like that. Maybe increase it a bit more, 0.5. So now the particles are actually going that way. All right. So yeah, and if you have like more particles, you're probably going to get this like strings effect, which I don't really like. Uh, you can see the patterns, they're kind of like very uniform patterns of particles, which we don't want. So you can go ahead into the force and we have uh, one a noise layer and then we have the other. So I'm just going to enable it maybe like 0.5 and 0.2 so we can just break that sort of a pattern because we don't want it to be that perfect pattern of particles probably it's a little too much so 0.1 just to break it I mean it's not that bad but I don't want it to be looking like you know just they're just emitting in pattern so yeah so now they're fine and we do want to delete them now or probably decrease the force strength 0.3 so now they're fine. So now uh, just uh, we need to give them some shape and some light and we can go ahead and render it out. So for the shape, I'm just going to hit tab and bring up the shape operator like before. And I'm going to go into the shape type. It's going to be a sphere, geosphere, low res because they're very small particles. I'm just going to go into display and set it to geometry. So now we have them. And of course, they're uh, very big, so we can go into the shape, enable the size, probably like 20% or 30%, with 15% variation uh, is looking nice. So now that we have a visual size of the particles, we do want to decrease the distance to like 0.3 maybe, so we have more particles. 
Now we have a lot more particles, so it's looking pretty nice. And uh, now if you want to change the shape or the spline, it's just a matter of going to you know the shapes and creating a new shape, like a text maybe. And I'm just going to go into like, what, subscribe. So there it is, and just hit A, rotate it like 90 degrees. Probably want it to be like all caps, so subscribe. And I want it to be Arial Black. And I want the particles to be born from this shape rather than that donut. So I'll just go ahead, bring it here. You can have it being born from both, but I'm just going to remove this and pick the subscribe. And now I have all these particles, and I can hide the donut. And now I have these particles being born from that which is looking really nice. All right, but I am happy with that donut. So yeah, just delete the subscribe. So now for the lighting part, of course, I'm using V-Ray, so I'm just gonna go into render setup, uh, set it to V-Ray 5. Uh, I do want to apply a very simple material, so M, standard legacy, just apply it to my uh, tie flow, so they're just neutral particle shape and color. I'm just going to go into lights and V-Ray, V-Ray light. Just drag one out here for the general lighting of the shot. So just uh, rotate it here and just go ahead here. And uh, the one thing that you don't want to forget and somebody asked in the comments that I can't see my particles in the render, of course you need to add a mesh operator for them to be shown in render. So I'm just going to make sure you add it to all of your uh, events and to copy one uh, operator from one event to another, just hold down shift and drag it and you have it copied or cloned. So yeah, now if you're going to 3D Studio, I'm just going to go and turn on the V-Ray IPR. So we have it here. All right, so we have our V-Ray IPR here and I do want to select my light and I do want it to be invisible and I want to make it like very low, so probably like 13. And the other thing, uh, the main thing that I want to add is, of course, add this orangish color. So I do want to add another light. So I'm just going to go into lights, very light. And I'm just going to add a sphere light and just drag it one here. And probably, uh, not probably, but make it invisible. And change the color to like orange. And yeah, and increase the intensity, of course, to like 100 so we do want it to be very bright. And you can go ahead and play around with the intensity. So that's something that you can go ahead and play around with. Uh, I'm just going to go filter, lights, just like this light. And increase it or change the color to like maybe a bluish color or whatever you like. But that's basically it. And I do want to show you guys how to render this because somebody asked in, in one of the comments or something. So you just go to render setup. And set the range, uh, in this case it's like 100 frames, so from 0 to 100, you can just go ahead, uh, type the size, the width and height, and click on the files, and it's specify a location for it, and then just hit render, and then it will render it out for you frame by frame. So I'm just going to go ahead and stop this. So the other thing I did was I went ahead into After Effects, you can use Nuke or whatever, so I have this uh, uh, shot in the render, so it's 300 frames. Just select it, right click, new comp from selection, or just drag it here. So it will make a new composition out of it. So this is the raw render. And the other thing I did was I went ahead into the, uh, the effect. Uh, I added a motion blur. So I'm using the Revision FX Real Smart Motion Blur. So it looks really nice with motion blur. So this is like without it. If I turn this off, I have two layers, of course. So this is without motion blur and this is with, so it's going to look very nice. So you don't need to render motion blur from your 3D, you can add it in post and after effects with this plugin. And of course I added some color correction to make it pop out and some glow to really make it intense. And of course you can change the color by using a hue and saturation effect. So yeah, that sums up the tutorial for today. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if you go to my channel, FX Maniac, and I'm hoping that by now, if you're new to my channel, you are convinced that I do create some, uh, you know, some useful tutorials. I mean, if you enjoyed it, you
you can go ahead uh, and subscribe leave a comment uh, if you've missed anything or any questions as always I'll be very glad to answer it like the video um, and yeah and if you want to support me you can go ahead and subscribe to my audio aura channel and also receive some really high quality music no copyright free royalty free and you can use it on your videos all right so this was the today's tutorial I hope you guys enjoyed it hope you learned something from it till the next one enjoy working